to a cool. What is that? A boom, 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 boom. Oh my goodness, Choco. Choco. Like, so weird. <laughs> He's like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Choco, it's gonna help you be safe in the water because you're not the best swimmer. What a handsome doggy. <laughs> the, little, the little shark fin. <laughs> I don't do butt. <laughs> Choco! Choco! Go get the coco! <laughs> <laughs> Good boy! Good boy! Oh, so safe! So safe, Choco! The suitcase is like, I'm gonna walk my dog. <laughs> oh, poor Choco, he's like, mm. We found a new canoe locally a great beamy kayak type boat that can function as our dinghy for now. It's pretty much unsinkable and very stable. I used to have one for my little warm cat, so jumped at the chance of picking this one up used for about 150 bucks. Around these parts, there's usually always a mast to climb. Our friend and patron, Francesca, called us over to take a look at her masthead, and we had the chance to test out the bigger bosun's chair that we used to have on Rosa. Back on Inesperado, the jumbo pack of sanding discs, sent to us from another generous viewer, got us through the final stages of prepping the walls and ceilings for a fresh coat of paint. I finally gotten to the point where I can start painting this thing. Adding a little bit of white really drastically brightens the area. I'm thinking that the fiberglass surfaces will require some sort of protective base coat. But for all the areas that have been previously painted, or for the wood, we can use a cheaper local paint. We used this type of paint on Rosa's interior rebuild. It's an oil-based paint that applies really nicely with lots of thinner and a roller. The only difference is that this time, we tried the quick drying version. In terms of durability, the results are comparable to bright side polyurethane paint that you usually find at the old West Marine shops in the States. But this Mexican paint only costs about $35 a gallon. And finally, with the painting being done, we're gonna be able to start the wiring. In between, I'm studying our new copy of the Nigel Calder book sent to us via the wish list. I finally convinced Robbie to let me crank him up the mast. So we're gonna do that today. And that will allow us to get the final confirmation of everything we're going to uh, be buying in terms of new rigging. Show me your style, Ravi. You want to pull me up with this one first? We finally managed to get a hold of the bosun's chair that we had on SB Rosa. Our friend Roberto, who is now the captain of Rosa, the new captain, he uh, decided to send us the bosun chair, which is really lucky because it's the only one that fits Robbie's butt properly. We never send anyone up a mast without using two halyards, if there are two available. It is more work to winch one, and then tension the other, winch one, tension the other, and then so on. But this is what love and care looks like. Now it was Robbie's turn to examine the state of affairs at the top of our mast. He's feeling everything up, feeling for irregularities, 
cracks, dents, and corrosion. He was also going to measure the diameter of all the pins, which I hadn't taken note of. He was also able to reach the top of the masthead, which my little arms could not reach before. What a surprise! He found a pair of balls at the top. One, two, three, and four. We have a space of four halyards. These are great as well. For spinnakers, I love to pull this mast down and repaint it before. If we bring the boat to Guatemala, I'm going to have the mast taken down. We double checked the measurements of all the stays right before the rain clouds rolled in. For this fleeting moment of relief from the heat, I light up the stove and use our new kettle which completes our collection of hot drink kitchenware. Wrap up the first portion of the paint job. There is still much to be done, but I'm on my way to San Francisco to pick up parts for all of our ongoing projects. Finish the paint job for now? Yeah, great job, looks amazing. It makes it a lot brighter in here. And that, that basically preps the area for you to put in some lighting and some wiring. And then when I come back, I'll do the, if you haven't already, I'll, I'll end up painting the, the ceilings. While I'm away, hopefully Robbie gets the chance to rebuild the galley, which he has started tearing apart. As you can see, we have all new dishware from our viewers, as well as our friend Raul, who is renovating his house and gifted us with many pots and pans. Hi, Justine. How are you? Um, oh, it's really hot and sticky here. And I'm, and I'm really cold. I'm sitting in a cold room where the wind is blowing outside, and I'm in the San Francisco area now, and you're still, yeah. in, you're still in our canal with our boat. Yeah, hot and sticky, as usual. And I was whisked away to Sausalito to come and get our rigging for our boat, our new rigging. And so this... Yeah, to get these new. Yeah, to get... To replace this <laughs> to <laughs> chain right here. To replace that jury rig. Why is it that we're using the old time, old fa... Well, not old fashioned. Why is it that we've finally made the decision on, on going with uh, stainless steel wire cable as opposed to um, doing maybe like a new fangled uh, uh, poly rope? No, what do you call it? What's all that noise? It's called high tech rigging. Instead of going with high tech rigging, uh, synthetic rigging. We have considered yeah. using synthetic rigging. It's not like there's so many cons to it that it's just outrageously not a good thing to do or something. It, it, there are a lot of people using synthetic rigging now for older boats and it has worked for them and it works out. But at yeah, the end of the day... Works. I mean, there's no doubt that, that it works and it's somewhat cheaper as well, but... It, How is it I mean, cheaper though? Me, it doesn't provide me the, the peace of mind for at least the next 10 years. I, it's, I, I'm still new stainless steel rigging one size up and for the next you know, 10, 15 years, I, I do not worry about my mask coming down. I don't have to check for, for chafe. I don't have to, you know, once in a while, you go and you check your, you know, your swages and you check the tightness, but that's it. I mean, and that's why I think the major advantage of the older one is, yes, the peace of mind and also the, the not having to readjust it again and again. And since we are lucky enough to have, you know, friends and connections that allow us to get reading for a really good price, then I, I don't see why not. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of too late now. I'm in the rigging shop as as we speak to each other yeah. now. And I've got all the, but I do have all the synthetic uh, rigging right behind me. It does look really good. There's still the chance that I can pick it up here. 
but this is kind of our our final conversation on the matter. <laughs> it's it's now or never. I've got the the sway the swedger machine behind me, and I've got the synthetic rigging behind me. So I've got the two possibilities as the possibilities right now. So what is going to make you go for the the wire rigging 100% right now? It's also this particular boat. If we had a lightweight warm or catamaran, I would really consider it. But this old tiny boat that has a big beefy mass with a sail in it and everything, there's a lot, there's a lot of shock load, there's a lot of, of movement. And where there's movement that touches Dyneema, there's wear. And, and yeah, I don't, I don't, I still don't feel comfortable having ch any point of chafe, you know, like, yes, it's easy to replace. You see a chafe line, you're like, hey, you know, a couple of bucks and I replace it, but. Okay, with so, that, with that in mind, what are the positive aspects of synthetic rigging? Because these are, name all the reasons why we did consider synthetic rigging as a possibility. Synthetic is great on large boats, but it, it, it is no longer, is no longer affordable. Like, when, when you go for larger boats, I think, you know, maybe, we're just in the limit, maybe. But any bigger, and you already have to start looking at PBO instead of Dyneema. And that kind of stuff. And what's the, the difference between that? What's the difference between PBO and Dyneema? It's just a more more expensive. It's covered. It's got. It's just. It's it's synthetic rigging. It's not a rope that happens to be oh strong enough to be used as rigging like Dyneema, and it's got a UV. That's another thing. The the Dyneema. Is pretty UV resistant, but it's not totally impervious to that. It's gonna creep. It's gonna stretch. Uh, yeah, UV damage, mm -hmm. kicking damage by water as well. Lots of things that salt crystals. The main advantages of synthetic rigging are one, I think the cost. I think if you have a smaller boat that's under 40 feet, I think it's very economical to do. How is and it I economical though? That you can do most of the of the spices yourself, and you just need the materials. There is yeah. almost no need of professional uh, people to install. I mean, with a bit of practice, you know, you do a couple of test spices and a couple of whippings, and you learn very quickly the aspects. And here we have the canal on a jet ski. People swimming on the boat. <laughs> I was saying, if you look at buying length of wire of cable stainless steel cable and and then the fittings at each end the the turnbuckle at one end and then the 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 eye at the opposite end and then you look at buying uh the synthetic rigging you buy the the cost of buying like synthetic rigging and then the terminals at each end there are more pieces and little terminals and and thimbles and for boats under 40 feet is i think way cheaper than having cable done especially with, when it comes to the labor part but even with the parts uh, a feet of dyneema is cheaper than a feet of cable it's way cheaper nowadays and uh, not really yeah. not if you're talking about covered sun protected and and all that I think yeah, but. I think the point I'm trying to make is that they're very comparable in cost, and for us the particular savings in cost is the shipping. So the synthetic rigging is a very cost-effective thing in terms of what it will cost to to get it to where we are. So here I am. I've come all the way up to the rigging shop in San Francisco because we're friends with the rigging shop. Um, we're able to get a big discount, so that's the reason why, in the end, we go with we go with wire swaged rigging. Yeah. Swaged rigging is is because um, because the cost is lower for us. But in general, the only cost savings is the weight and shipping costs. So that's the big pro for for synthetic rigging, in my opinion. Yeah. It saves weight, and then it saves weight on your mast. And that's why you said, if we had a multi-hull, perhaps we would consider getting um, synthetic rigging especially, because that's more than a mono-hull, in my opinion, you want to save that, that weight above the waterline. 
otherwise it it doesn't seem like you get all that more it seems like you're you're saving weight and that's the main feature of synthetic rigging it's definitely the weight and it's biggest uh, uh, con is that it gets its prone to chafe and damages easily I mean I think that's relatively that's weight. huh relatively easily yeah relatively I mean it, it takes a ton to, to damage uh, some cables like they're pretty hard to, to snap huh somehow like, this boat well, managed to get every cable damaged significantly and that's probably over time the original stuff we're not entirely sure exactly the age of this boat but i reckon that the um the rigging on on the current rig everything that's not jury rigged is the original rigging i think i think so too because everything is metric so yeah i think and the boat's done it's been done before the boat was in this continent, and I think this boat's been here for a while. Yeah. What? I removed the, I removed the lifelines so easy to get on, off and on the boat. Ah, okay, that's why you're sitting there. The yeah, I'm also going to remove the poles. I guess I can mention this too. Uh, immediately when I got to San Francisco, our friend Jean Mondeau uh, yeah. came and met me on arrival, and he has new stanchions for us. That's a whole set of ten new stanchions. So that's why I'm here as well. And yeah. it just happened that he took them off his boat and installed uh, some pipe, some aluminum uh, handrails all the way around. So we get all his stanchions. The only way to really get what you need for a boat is usually fly to the States. <laughs> can, you show, can you show me one of the really bent stanchions in the imagery? Like how bent do you want it? <laughs> So there's one of the stanchions. We are going to use synthetic line for all the lifelines. Yes. We really liked the synthetic uh, rigging because you yes. were able to uh, make that yourself and make it to uh, to cu basically custom fit. We didn't have to worry about yeah. um, whether it was not yeah. going to. It was going to be drooping or whatever. You you made it to size. It's nice on the hands. It's nice and soft. Yeah. Um, In fact, if you want to have a, uh, the the stanchions uh, Jean gave us, you have to measure uh, measure the size of the rope that goes through. That's true. And a little bit extra because uh, I think it has to go through with a rug no, with a chafe through. guard. You you used yes, um you used uh, the 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 heat shrink as chafe guard. Yes. Yeah, that worked pretty well. Yeah. Uh, and we really, really liked when we made the running backstays with synthetic rigging. Yeah, those I would still make. So they, we're... They, for that, they're nice, because they don't swing, they don't... Yeah. Definitely go for that. They're easier to handle. Oh, it's Loopy! It's Lupita! Oh, poor girl, she wants to go run around. Oh. She's a yeah, menace, though. 